Good evening, gentlemen. Good, Good evening. evening. Can you believe that's two weeks gone already? Yes. It's been a busy time. It has, it has, it has. Have you guys had a good week or two? It's been amazing. It's been good for me. Obi's probably had an interesting time. And James, James yeah, isn't here, is he? James isn't here. He's not made it tonight. James isn't well. So, uh, James, we miss you this evening. We've been praying and believing that by the time you wake up, you are going to be healed and restored in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Obi, what's your couple of weeks been like? Um, yeah, the week before last was great. Um, it was filled with anticipation. Of okay. What we're, probably what we'll delve into tonight. Yeah. But yeah, it's been great. And the weekend was a bit busy, but great, mm -hmm. lovely. Then came back to a bit of um, challenging week. But mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but gradually things are settling back. But it's good. It's good. Um, challenging, good, anticipation, filled excitement, blessed massively. Okay. Come back to challenge. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. It did. That yeah. last couple of weeks. Wow. Yeah, that but sounds good. exhausting as yeah. well at the end yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. But not bad. So, how, how about you, Joeda? Yeah. Do you know what? I think I'm in the mode of what What did I do? <laughs> What's my name? Where do Where I come I? from? <laughs> that sums it up. Okay. Every time I do um, Little Stars, the toddler group uh, that I run, um, every week I'll say to the mums, how are you doing? How's yep. the week? And they all turn around and go, how's your week? What have you been up to? And I go, uh, I don't actually even know that a week's <laughs> gone. That's how much of a blur yeah. it is. So, yeah, I still oh, wow. think I'm in that. Okay. Uh, I still feel like is I Is that um, just because life's busy all the time yeah, and there's lots going on? I or? think so. Okay. I think mm -hmm. you're just, like most people, you're just on a bit of a treadmill sometimes. Yeah. So, um, and when you've got two little ones at home with you all the time, it is mm. amazing how your mind is full mm -hmm. and ticking and thinking mm. and, yeah. Yeah. They're just flying by, like we just said when we were talking about your grandson, who mm. is now eight months. You want to go, yeah. where has eight months gone yeah. this year? Yeah. I mean, I know when I was younger, everyone was saying, you know, the older you get, time time flies, time flies. They're not wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm uh. like, that's officially it. I'm clearly getting older because life is going <laughs> please, by please ridiculously fast. Please don't start the age, fast. Don't start the age discussion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is right. Is this flying? I, do. <laughs> I think we probably all can remember those times as a kid when you're waiting for something. Yeah. And whether it's Christmas morning and you've woken up early and you've got you know an hour or two or three to wait, and those those minutes take so long to go yeah. past, don't they? And now, yeah, not so much. Yeah, <laughs> not so much at all. I can do with twenty-five hour days now. Okay, so. <laughs> twenty-five hour days. Twenty-five That's hour days. I need more time. Do you? It just seems to be catching up. It seems to be almost trying to catch up. Sometimes mm -hmm. you almost have to physically stop. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like Joida, three young kids and work, so it can be busy. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. And the kids are an amazing blessing, they amazing are. provision, but there's always something to do. And yeah. they, they always need you for one thing or another. Yeah. They Usually all at the same time. They keep you busy. They do keep you busy. <laughs> they keep you busy. They really do when you want to go, oh my goodness, what was like? life yeah. like before you had children <laughs> and you I, I had a great longing i didn't have mm -hmm. children till much later on in life and i desperately wanted children they come and they are a real blessing mm. but boy do they change life <laughs> they do they change your headspace yeah. i swear that the older you get i don't think that i have got the brain capacity to have memories anymore i just mm. think <laughs> you've lost that they, right? they just drop out <laughs> somewhere all of a sudden someone will say something and i'll go it wasn't that long ago how have i forgotten this i yeah. literally am coming to yeah, the conclusion yeah that the more the children that I have got have taken up so much of my headspace mm. as long with everything else that I think all those little things that I used to remember the details of uh, mm. there's no room yeah. they've dropped out yeah. somewhere. I used to know loads of stuff <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm operating on a one in one out principle at the moment so any, anything new that comes in I lose something you have else. to lose something <laughs> I should remember that though because I'm scanning the news on my phone and stuff like that and you, you forget that actually every new piece of information I'm taking in yeah. It's, it's getting harder to access some of the other stuff that's there. So well, then that's careful. just really interesting, isn't it? In a day and age where yeah. we have Bombarded access to every bit of information that we ever want, mm. that would change. If, if scientifically they show that that actually was real, that the information that you take in will mean that you will lose memories. Oh, gosh, I hope wouldn't not. It change how you, <laughs> wouldn't it change the absolute tripe that you look at? Wouldn't it change oh. what you read, what you watched? Yeah. Somebody somebody need to write in and let us know how that works. I'm yeah. sure it doesn't quite work. Like that, but it just feels don't like don't let it. it work like that. <laughs> <No, please not. laughs> Otherwise, we are in serious trouble. Put yeah, your yeah. phones down. Yeah. Turn the TV yeah. off. But you're right. Wouldn't that change what you what you took but on board? But it will board? actually. Wow. Yeah, it will. Yeah, it would. Massively. 
because I wouldn't want to lose precious memories from no. Dribble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> some memories, maybe. But well, yeah. <laughs> some memories. You, Could you, you select? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it none of those memories that you well, forget? Yeah, you see the deep yeah. scarred, yeah. which actually leads us into the church weekend away because ah, this okay. was, that's it. I was going to say that. Yeah, <laughs> that was something that was great. So, Stuart, talk to us. Tell us where have we been? What have we okay. been doing? Well, we had what we called a church weekend away, and I didn't realise that was confusing until I, somebody on Sunday was asking me where we were last weekend, and I was trying to explain that we went away. For a church weekend away and then they asked me what that was and mm. and it i realized that actually not everyone knew what one of those was mm. so yeah. in practice um we invited the church as many as wanted to um to come together in a place called ashburnham place which is about an hour south of here mm -hmm. just yeah. under beautiful grounds um our residential accommodation there and uh, meeting spaces and from friday afternoon late afternoon through to Sunday lunchtime, we were there as many as could make it from the church family together. Yeah. And we stayed in the same place. We ate meals together. We had some service type things, some worship, some teaching, yeah. times of prayer, uh, some fun times, some relaxing times. And uh, that was it. Yeah. So that's what we did. And it was blinking awesome, wasn't it, Ovi? Uh, it was. It was. I think um, what it reminds me of a little bit was... Um, um, my second son, Timothy. So there was his birthday last year that he was building up. He was doing countdown 20 days, mm -hmm. 19, <laughs> 18. He was full of excitement. And the expectation guys. was rising he and was, rising. And the day arrives and Timothy was exhausted from anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> and he woke up and he felt overwhelmed with emotion. Oh, oh no. <laughs> and, and, and I felt like Ashburnham for me. It was building up and building up, mm -hmm. and I was excited. I actually went to London on the day. It was hectic, but mm -hmm. there is this almost adrenaline you're running on because, mm -hmm. you know, I was working. I signed off work at 12. Mm -hmm. had to see a friend that sadly lost his mom, but I had to see him and then get back. I literally got back at Tunbridge, hopped into the car, and we're heading straight mm -hmm. to Ashburn. Wow. We had parked the night before, so that was like okay. going on holiday, yeah, yeah. yeah. but with just yeah. family, people you know. Yeah. Um, and it was beautiful. And I think when we got to Ashburnham and the night of worship, mm. it was like during that worship, that first night worship, the, the whole weekend was beautiful, don't get me wrong. But during that first worship, it was like, wow. Mm -hmm. is, is you worship on Sunday and it's fine. I will get into all Ashburnham. But mm -hmm. for me, it was like an evening where you've been anticipating and you don't quite know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And in that moment of worship, with the church family on an evening, you know you're all going to spend the evening together. And it's just that overwhelming emotion of mm. of joy, of mm. peace, mm -hmm. of just being together as one. And, mm. and for me, in that moment, I didn't, I wasn't overwhelmed as Timdy was, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I was just filled with gratitude to God yeah. for such an opportunity. And it was such a blessing to just worship with the church family. Yeah, yeah so it was good. It was yeah. good. I, that whole anticipation thing, I totally get because I love being around people mm -hmm. and then to get all my favorite people in a one place for a whole yeah. weekend. Mm. I was buzzing to the point where Andy was still sort of working and I'm like, come on, okay. get in the shower, man, <laughs> let's get ready, let's go. <laughs> um, I love, uh, that just to me, and the fact we weren't in a tent. Okay, because yeah. we chatted here, didn't we, about new wine we and did. talking that through. And, yeah. um, so and we you guys intense. weren't, you were there just for the day. Just you for a day, well, I, I didn't camp. There. You didn't yeah. come, so yeah, we're yeah, trying to rope yeah. you yeah. in. Because James next loves camping, yeah, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Sharon, less Not so. Less so, but, um. <laughs> so it was lovely, you yeah. know, even to have you guys and to have okay, extended yeah. and yeah. then on a, with a roof on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and a, a toilet that I didn't have to <laughs> walk up the road in the middle of the night oh. and hope I didn't <laughs> die tripping over guide roads. Just little luxuries like that. provided. Oh, and they did really well. Yeah, they yeah. did incredibly well. Um, yeah, it was just, it was awesome. Yeah. If I yeah. could do that once a year, every year, I would love that. <laughs> yeah. And I'm looking and this is when Stuart and <laughs> Paul Helen and the team are going, not every uh, year. Not we every need a year, year. to break. Because that's a lot of organisation. It's partly the practicality of yeah. the venue. So yeah. um, we're already looking at future dates. Brilliant. And um, 
Yeah, so is everybody else, seemingly. So we're trying to find the date where we can get as many people there as possible. Yeah. Because right. um, there's quite a lot of restrictions around that. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, we'll see what we can do. But we're yeah. praying into it and practically looking as well at what the slots are. But, awesome. Um, that would be great. But yeah, I love the sense of arriving and what was that like for you guys? to? Because I was there a little bit early and, to be honest, my head was just spinning. By the time yeah. people were arriving, we'd set up a full... A small but full PA system for mm. one of the rooms, the main room. Try to do get make sure that the youth and kids facilities had enough mm-hmm. sound and every, all visual equipment as well. Um, been around some of the different rooms and put things in some of the different rooms. Made wow. sure people were in the right places, mm-hmm. and there was just a lot going on. Yeah. So to be honest, by the time we got to people arriving in the evening, I was like running Spent. on fumes <laughs> by the middle of it, um, and, and then needing to speak it that. Evening, Even, just because yeah. the way this setup was done. Yeah. Um, but there, I'm loving hearing that. that was a real sense of anticipation uh, for you guys arriving. It was so exciting. And what about so the kids? Exciting. Were they looking forward to it as well? Oh, my goodness. My children were bouncing off the flipping oh, really? walls wow. to the point where I actually thought Ezra might spontaneously <laughs> combust oh, in a puff of smoke. <laughs> he was so excited. And then it was just countdown because we got mm. there because I was so excited, I was like, come on, Andy, we've got to be there at half past four, half past okay. four. Also, because I like the idea of being able to just be done. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All the rooms yeah. unpacked, then yeah. we yeah. are just done. The kids can have a bit of time before It's such a beautiful everything. location. Oh, it is. Uh, glorious. And the weather, I don't know who arranged the weather. Uh, um, I mean, it God, wasn't was God was good. in the weather. <laughs> come on. And we're, we're recording this now on a day when it started at three degrees this yeah. morning. Ooh. And uh, last week, when we were away together, it was 23-ish. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was it so was warm. It was glorious. Now, now we've came, we've come anticipating this event, looking forward to it. But there will have been some who will have been quite nervous yeah. about it, mm. um, because it was the first time they've been. I, I suspect yeah. there'll be others who didn't book in, just because it was a bit overwhelming. That mm-hmm. whole thought of being away together, maybe people thinking, "Well, I'll be on my own. How do yeah. I manage that?" Yeah. It's not all excitement and joy for yeah, people, is it? All no, mixed right. feelings. And yeah. um, we did this as a church four years ago. I think yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, the last was time we could pre-COVID 2019. 2019. Yeah. Um, and it's the first one I've been involved in, so I was quite nervous about that. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people were, because yeah. we hadn't been involved in that sort of thing. Uh, for, certainly for the church here for many, many years, and yeah. um, many of us hadn't been at all. And this year felt different because yeah. we'd done one, yeah. um, for some of us at least. But yeah, I'm just intrigued that whole, all the different emotions that people come mm. with, exhaustion, mm. excitement fear yeah uh, there's a whole load going on isn't yeah. there and we bring all that into the mix as we come yeah mm-hmm. and what was that first that first kind of evening being together like then what Obi, you've described it for you yeah um Charita, what was that like for you just being there that first time? yeah i think like you said Obi, there was a real joy mm. of being together it was a friday night yeah. Um, I've got to be really honest, there was an added joy for me that last time Otto wasn't even one. So he was in okay. a sling yep. for me, most of the sessions. Mm. So for me, it was a bit like, bye kids, have fun. <laughs> and then I was a bit like, and yes, okay. come on, mummy yep. time. Um, so that was really beautiful. Yeah. So that was an added beauty for mm-hmm. me this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that there were still other parents that were still walking yep. the journey that I did four yeah. years yeah. ago. And, yeah. and that is a rough journey because yeah. you're, you're desperately wanting to be engaged, mm-hmm. but you know you really can't. And that is hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But be encouraged. Your time is coming. Yeah. Yeah. Your time is coming when your child <laughs> yeah. will be free to See go what to has got a date group. in the diary. <laughs> <laughs> about to get a date. So... Um, so I mean, the guy that led worship for us, oh, what anointing brilliant. and a blessing. Yeah, yeah they a were really real, good, weren't they? A real, real blessing. Um, yeah, they were great. So being a worship leader, it was awesome for me that okay. there was somebody that was handed over that was anointed. Yeah. Mm, yeah. They sounded awesome. And just no fuss. No, no fuss. fuss. No yes. showmanship. Amen there was none that. of that, but just a gentle authority. Yeah. Yes. A flow. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Really good. And really wanted sensitive. to worship. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. was authentic yeah. worship. Yeah. I felt like I was joining him yeah. in yeah. the way that he wanted both to of them. worship. They both both of them. really well together, yeah. didn't they? Both of yeah. them. Um, so, yeah, that whole evening was just really beautiful to be together. And yeah. again, that anticipation of what God was wanting mm-hmm. to say. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I didn't come with any great agenda. Yeah. Um, and I didn't come with any need. Mm. I was just like, 
where you say when two or more are gathered, you're going to be with us yeah. and you're amongst us. So what are you going to do? Yeah. yeah. So I came with an expectation of what are you going to do? <laughs> what, yeah. are you, what are you going to say? What are you going to do? Um, and I'm amongst family and my yeah. dear friends mm. that I love to share life with. So that whole evening was like, this is just awesome. Mm. I love it and I don't want it to stop. Oh. Which was awesome. And <laughs> that was, was the first night. That was the first night. And yeah. I was like, and we've still got two more days of this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. And, and I had the similar feeling at the end as well that mm. I just thought, oh, actually, I've, I did feel that God had done all that he needed to by that stage mm -hmm. it was okay to come home mm -hmm. yeah. but it it just had felt like such a privilege to yeah. be there yeah. i didn't want to come home yeah you know, just that sense oh, i could just stay one mm -hmm. more day one more day. and i know that then that would have been one more day please and then one, <laughs> cause partly because it's such a beautiful environment yeah, and, it but it had been so good to be together yeah it had i suspect though because it, it just seemed from my perspective that um, everyone got on well together. There was no mm. fallouts. There's no, not that we get that in church a we lot don't. anyway, not that yeah. I see. But yeah. but I can imagine if you had another day and another day and another day, it wouldn't <laughs> be long before, you know, that person who <laughs> snores two doors down <laughs> starts to get a bit more annoying and, you know, the little bits begin to grate. But we didn't have any of that. So um, really? it was absolutely wonderful to come home yeah. Yeah. just feeling full. Yeah. Um, how did you feel when you came home? I, I felt, I mean, tired, but full and blessed and, um, yeah, so encouraged by what we'd seen together. Yeah, I definitely, I was exhausted. Well, we got a text message from you, Stuart, talking about something. And I was, I remember going, <laughs> Stuart, are you, are you kidding about? me? <laughs> Man, how have you got a headspace to do this? Because I've literally yeah. been dribbling on the sofa for the last two hours and I haven't even unpacked my brain from yeah. the car. I, so I was exhausted, okay. yeah. but in a nice way, yeah. in a way that you have gone, I couldn't. I couldn't have packed out yeah. packed in any more yeah. of all the people and all the stuff. So yeah, exhausted, but just, it was rich. It was lovely. Yeah. I, my tank was filleth yeah. for Good. sure. Really filled up. Yeah, it was. Good. I yeah. think that that's so encouraging to hear because that was the whole purpose of it. That yeah. it was a time for a group of people from one church to be together and to celebrate all that God wants to do, yeah. has been doing amongst us, but also to create space yeah. for God to be at work and yeah. for those relationships to deepen. Yeah. And I think we you just I, don't get time, do we? You often? don't. And I think what was really lovely is you, there was that space, that yeah. beautiful space that it mm. wasn't jam packed mm -hmm. with things to do. There okay. was that beautiful space on Saturday yeah. um, and even on yeah. Sunday morning before we mm. all gathered for our last worship together. It was just really beautiful to have that time that you could go off yeah. if you wanted yeah. to and have some space. Mm. And the grounds, like you say, even if you just sat, I literally just went and sat on the ramp outside sun mm. glorious black beautiful view how can you not connect mm. with jesus yeah. in that moment yeah. so those little moments were just really beautiful that enabled mm. i would hope to think that everybody would have had at least even if it was 10 minutes that mm. they could have taken themselves mm -hmm. away somewhere and had some time just for them yeah i didn't have much time for myself <laughs> but, oh sorry but it was oh. good it was good this is why i like you joida i didn't come with any expectation mm -hmm. whatsoever mm -hmm. um i just came with anticipation of being with God and mm. being with people of God and um, and just enjoying God's pre presence, really. Um, there was nothing more. I knew it was going to be special because mm. it was a bit of a longer time mm -hmm. to be in God's presence and be among people. Mm. Um, on Saturday, for example, during the quiet time or the break time, mm -hmm. I spent two hours in the field supervising a, a group of eight boys, two of <laughs> two, which of my sons. Yeah playing football that sounds incredibly uh, relaxing very yeah. relaxing and in that time i could even see god was speaking and okay. the interesting is that's that awesome. i was watching the boys okay. and i saw one of them was joe Eders, and i saw his smartness and how he was busy choosing his teammates carefully okay and i was making sure he was on the winning side <laughs> 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 and i was watching them and they went to take someone off and they went to swap and and in those little things we, we sometimes, I sometimes expect overwhelming, and I had moments over the weekend where I had a deep sense of connection with God. Mm. But even in those little moments, I was thankful to God mm. that I could come and watch kids from other 
members of God's mm. kingdom entrusted mm. with their care to just mm. watch them express God's glory yeah. and be among God's people and express oneness. And in a world where we are increasingly being isolated mm-hmm. yeah. and becoming affiliated with internet, nothing wrong with that. We're yeah. speaking on podcasts. But in that world, I was yeah. so grateful to God that we as a church family, through the grace of God, was able to provide this environment where mm. our children could feel the freedom yeah. Yeah, to absolutely. play, to worship, to yeah. grow. Um, Dume came back, my first son came back, and he's not the one that's spontaneous about mm-hmm. kingdom. And, and this is why I said I, I wasn't expecting anything, but... Um, he got back with his shield of armor of God, okay, yeah, which is one of our theme. Yeah, and he said to me, Dad, the next morning, come into my room. And I went into his room, and he has by his bedside, he had put up the armor of God, brilliant. Uh, and then he put the cross oh, on, on the side of his bed. Wow. And, and, and for me, it's not about sometimes about the deepness of the worship, mm-hmm. it's about the simple things. Yeah that God is creating a nation Mm. for the future for himself and Mm. that we are part of that work of God in this time. So for me, that was the huge blessing. Mm. So despite the fact that the wind, the glorious sun was in my face and I wasn't spending a long time worshiping, in those moments, God was saying, we are using you to create this generation of yeah. army of mm. god that is coming yeah. and they are equipping for this time that's brilliant. so it's a blessing mm-hmm. it's a massive and as blessing. a dad that's so encouraging yeah. isn't it to see he, your he son was. responding in that way he was that's awesome. so brilliant. yeah i think it's moments like this that are really important and key parts of our kids stories mm. to build these relationships that mm. i'm praying that none of us not go anywhere <laughs> mm-hmm. that these kids will grow yeah. into teenage years with solid friends yeah. you know friends that they know like ezra will literally be a bit like do they know jesus yeah like, dude i don't know yeah. and that reality for him because he is surrounded with a whole mm-hmm. load of friends other than mm. the homemade community that we do his friends and his good core friends Mm. are from Mm. church and Mm. we really love that and that Mm. weekend away for the boys they just were overwhelmed Mm. with wanting to spend more time with everybody and you're just like lord i felt it was such a blessing and these are the things that you want your kids to have that they embed their own relationship because i loved embedding my relationship with you guys Mm. and everybody else but i desperately want that for my kids too yeah that yeah. the friends they're going to have are the yeah. friends that the followers of Jesus, mm. that they're going to, you know, sharpen each other, knock off edges often in a safe environment, mm-hmm. in a yeah. safe place. Um, so, yeah, for me, it was a blessing that you were looking after my two boys with football. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> it gave what me I freedom. I had thank fun. You. I had fun. I didn't <laughs> say I was planning to do that, no, but I found not. myself in the role and I enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. It was brilliant. I really did. And we had, like the worship team where we had Jonathan and Jules, we yeah. had great provision for our youth and kids yeah. as well um, with Karen and Leslie looking after the youth from Youth for Christ and Josh and Anna um, who had driven up from Folkestone blessing. to look after the kids yeah, and awesome. together what an amazing team God had provided yeah. Yeah. so Absolutely. encouraged and, and that they would want to invest in our mm. children Yeah, I think that was what really humbled me I would yeah. say thank you to Anna and I thought I'm not even going to be able to do this because I yeah. felt so blessed that these guys would give up their time to mm-hmm. come yeah. and invest in our children mm-hmm. for this weekend mm-hmm. it it was a real blessing mm-hmm. to us and i don't even know if they have a clue as to what they were planting in those kids lives no. you know my four-year-old comes out singing all the fruits <laughs> of the spirit and can name them off one oh, by brilliant. one and brilliant. feels so proud of himself yeah. and you just think guys that that catchiness that yeah. fun and yeah. my two uh, nieces that um come to church mm. um, every now and then but not really um, mm-hmm. invested in friendships and stuff they were like oh if church was like this every week it'd oh. be awesome they <laughs> oh. absolutely and they just came oh, really? for the Sunday morning wow. they loved it okay. you think yeah Josh and Anna that's a blessing yeah. to uh, gift our kids like yeah. that yeah. for the weekend and essentially gift me Yeah, I was a little yeah. bit like you gifted me that space and that time to be Joeda not yeah. being too uh, mummy to two boys yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a gift they were a real yeah, right. gifting mm. for us to come anybody that came to serve you know doug and tim mm. and helen oh, the whole, all of them to just come and want to invest in our mm. lives was just incredible and i suppose is that not what this church family should be doing yeah. you know it was a yeah. gift yeah. to it, us and it was humbling to have doug and tim and helen there yeah. um yeah. speaking to us and for those who are listening who don't know our church and um maybe don't know who came we had some some long-standing friends of our mine uh, come and share 
And um, yeah, it'd been a long time in the planning. Mm. You know, we've been chatting about this for, for some years now and uh, had a bit of a false start last year because we'd booked for last year. And um, I think Doug and Tim and I were kind of joking because um, Doug thought that it was still going ahead and was a bit <laughs> panicked because he wondered if he should be there last year. And he got reassurance from Tim saying, no, that's fine. You, you didn't need to be there. Um, but these guys, you know, uh, Tim and Helen traveling down from Watford, uh, Doug from uh, East London, and um, all of them have got plenty going on in their mm, lives. Yeah. Mm. Um, personal stuff happening at quite a significant level, church and, and uh, charity work as well. Yeah. And uh, again, investing time to be with, with our church yeah. family. Yeah. And it felt amazing to, yeah, to, to have those guys there. Yeah, it was um, awesome. Yeah, really good. And so with all that planning had come together and uh, God had been speaking in the over the months to yep. cr- to lead um tim came up with this idea initially about this kind of un the, the the unclothed and then the clothed and as we chatted and prayed that formed into this theme of being mm. tailor-made and um, mm. how god is at work um providing clothing for us um in a spiritual sense yep. um, but also how we need to strip away some things mm-hmm. um to reveal the work that God needs to do mm. and then to put on the clothing that he gives spiritually with the armor of God and different aspects that Doug was covering. And uh, I was just really, really encouraged by how that theme worked together yeah. by the end yeah. um, of the weekend. A l- you know, a little bit unsure at one point because it felt like, I think on the Saturday, um, Tim had done a session and it, I think we'd gone to a coffee break or something and it felt like, oh, he's not finished yet. There's more mm. to do and God mm. needs to mm. do some more stuff. And mm. and then Doug had been asked to speak and so he'd preached and then you kind of go to your free time and, and then a social in the evening and thinking, oh, there's just something mm. we've not quite wrapped up yet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then we chatted about it, prayed about it and then re- restructured the mm. Sunday plan uh, with Tim speaking a bit and then with some prayer time and then with Doug speaking and prayer time and... And it, by the end of the weekend, I just thought, oh, yeah, you could see the theme yeah. mm-hmm. actually working out and there'd been space for yes. everything that needed to be mm-hmm. fitted in. And that, again, just felt a very gentle leading of yeah. the Holy Spirit yeah. as we were holding the program before him. Nobody yeah. was precious about it. The guys were brilliant. They they right came around. to serve mm-hmm. and, um, yeah, just willing to do anything that was needed mm. to see God's kingdom come mm, and God at work, awesome. which is just really, really brilliant. What a blessing. Yeah, a real blessing. And what I really loved is that Tim and Doug came at things differently. Yeah. And yet it was, oh, it was on fire. Yeah, it was. Can I just say, though, I could have listened to Doug <laughs> speak. You know, when someone starts speaking, you're like, man, oh, hang on. I when you said feel it. Like that. <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> At one of the night, one of these sessions, you were a bit like, "Has anyone got writer's right. cramp here?" Yeah. Because I was a bit like, "Yes, I have." Because I'm like, I'm trying to take this in. <laughs> hey, Doug, slow down. Because there's some rich bits in here that I don't yeah. want to miss. But it was he is a mind of information. I was like, yeah. "Ah, this there's guy." There's just so much there, isn't there? Yeah, and then I really love Tim's prophetic. Yeah. I yeah. really love. He's yeah, and one of the words he gave for someone was spot on and mm-hmm. I'm sitting at the back mm-hmm. going this guy is you have yeah. no clue but this yeah. is so mm-hmm. spot on um it was lovely to have that balance for yeah me. the it teaching was, and the prophetic oh, together yeah. Yeah. beautiful great combination yeah really really good and the Q&A session again that was really re- at first I was a bit like like you I felt like are we done yet I mm-hmm. felt like oh mm-hmm. that there's there's unsaid on un- undone that stuff's yeah. not done mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we went into the q a i was like i'm not i'm not sure about this it's i'm yeah. trying to get my head around feeling like I, there's more to yeah. be done here um and actually that was just yes. that was a gem mm. so just to unpack for those who weren't there we we took some time out in the afternoon saturday afternoon we carved out a space that we weren't quite sure what to put in it we'd mm. kind of called it q a question answer and maybe response time maybe prayer time we weren't quite sure mm. and tim uh, and helena tim had said look he'd be happy to coordinate that session mm. and even on the day we were chatting just before it going well what kind of direction are we going to take it mm-hmm. and um doug had shared a little bit of his story his own personal journey and personal story um with his family and his upbringing and and um Tim, he'd shared that at the dinner table and, and Tim asked him to, to share that little mm. bit. And uh, that mm. took us on a journey of yeah. with him 
into some amazing uh, God incidences yeah. and times where God had been at work. And of course, Helen shared as well in such a really profound and yeah. powerful yeah. way Beautiful. about their own story and what's happening for yeah. her mm. um, with the challenges that they're facing at the moment. And uh, yeah, where do you go with stories like that? I mean, it was mm. it's real. It's real yeah. life. It's painful. Yeah. It's it's still in process for both of them. Um, and yet you're seeing God at work yeah. in it. One of the most powerful things for the whole weekend for me was something, you know, as we were talking before this evening, how whenever we're, we're preaching or, or sharing anything from God's word, you're hoping that it's sometimes will be in alignment with what mm. God's already doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For some, it will be that it's actually not in alignment, but it's something yep. that God's wanting to put his finger on for you. Mm-hmm. Other times yeah. it's him kind of coming in saying, hey, you've already heard this, mm. keep going. And um, when Helen shared that... Um, that the whole view for herself of going you know god's plans are bigger yeah you know and and how small we are in his great big plan and actually who do we think we are in that plan Mm. and taking us into that place of going his plans go on regardless Mm. of us because of who he Mm. is Mm -hmm. and that was so in alignment what the father's already been challenging me joey if you die do you think your boys are not going to be who i've called them to be do you think Mm. it starts and finishes with you do you think your husband wouldn't cope yeah. do you mm. think the end of the world will come for them mm. and and that being something that i'd already been journeying and walking and then here mm. i am with a woman sitting in front of me walking this journey out yeah. in the flesh before me speaking those very words it was so like mm. are you listening daughter yeah <laughs> are mm. you listening and i was like dad i'm listening i'm listening mm. take yeah. myself out of the center yeah. Mm. my responsibility is before you mm. Mm. before you yeah entrusting you regardless yeah. of what goes on you've got my kids and you've got my husband yeah. no yeah. matter what yeah take myself out of the center stage mm. and keep putting you back there and that mm. was that was a gold nugget for me that mm. was so in alignment it's, with it's what interesting you say that joida because that was the moment for me really mm-hmm. so, so mm. the weekend was full yeah Doc's teaching was brilliant. I'm mm. so privileged to have met him. I connected with him outside. Yeah. Of, you know, he's. I think he gen. was praying for you. Wasn't he, he was praying for me. So he we gave out we gave yeah. out prayer cards yeah. to yeah. pray no for way. each other. Yeah. And Doc got Obi. Yeah. That's so hilarious. when I, said, I introduced myself to him, he said, "Are you Obi?" He said, he said "Give me your last name." I said, "My last name is Emebo." He said, "Yeah, I'm praying for you." Come on. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. That's so, awesome. So, so and you so felt yeah. both privileged and uh, under pressure at so the same time. What have I got to live up to here? What has Stuart put up put up with? No. No, it, was, yeah. it was random. <laughs> it was random. That was Helen's doing as well. So. Awesome. So, so that was a blessing, uh, a huge, huge, huge blessing. I mean, the weekend um, uh, is not a cliche. Eh? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an interesting one because it's not a cliche for us saying people will expect that will say it was, it was a blessing, and it was a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. I think there are so many things for me, and the truth is, I didn't come expecting anything. I mm-hmm. came knew I was going to meet God. I was mm-hmm. going to spend yeah. time with people. It went in a way. For mm-hmm. me, like I said, a lot of it was practical. Mm-hmm. I didn't spend hours lying mm-hmm. in God's presence mm-hmm. and, and soaking up worship and all that. Yeah. I didn't, but there were impactful moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I will come when on uh, on, on teams prophetic, prophetic about memories mm-hmm. that we've got to lose. Mm-hmm. And he came up with that prophecy yeah, did, yeah. um, to us. And that was profound because okay. that was something I felt a lot of people in church needed to hear. That was something God was speaking to me, a journey I was on personally with mm. God, where you are progressing and there are still memories mm-hmm. that keeps coming. Other memories of past mistakes or memories of family hurts or mm. stuff mm-hmm. yeah. that, you know, God has forgiven you. You know, you've forgiven people. You know, you've moved on. But those memories are mm. there. Yeah. Is something that you've dealt with and dealt with over and over, mm. and it was such a profound healing moment for me. Mm. That's awesome. Where even I'm still working it practically, but now and I will go back. If a thought comes to me, I'll wait in the light of God's so word. I will say, "Is this a memory that I need to let go yep. of? I am not thinking on this right. practically." Yeah. So it's great. not like after the prayer is gone, yeah. but after the prayer and that word that mm-hmm. came over the weekend away, I'm able to almost. When the Bible says, arrest every thought Mm. and hold it captive. So Mm. I'm almost, I'm more vigilant. And I'm saying, you've given this word. Is this a memory that I need to hold or lose? 
then I'm losing you. I'm mm. not progressing in this thought pattern. Come on. And 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 it's practical because he mm. came from that prophecy. Mm -hmm. And and Tim prayed for us, prayed mm -hmm. for a couple of us, and that was a catch moment for me. Yeah. Um but the really humbling moment for me, um, among every other thing, there's so many. But you come away with one or two or yeah, three. And for course, me, yeah. that the memory, um, that prophecy, and when Helen was speaking about, um, is emotional for me. Because when Helen was talking about how even through her journey, and this is not a Helen recital, this is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My, my take, um, how through her journey and how even while she was joining and working with God, she has sometimes felt she was at the center or mm -hmm. had the light mm -hmm. on her. And um, in that moment, so I felt the Holy Spirit convict me mm. powerfully to say, when you want to think of serving me, do you think of you mm. bringing that? Yeah. <laughs> Or do you think you are just a tool? Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't matter in the bigger scheme of things. Mm -hmm. um, it was a humbling. Mm. I would never forget that moment mm. because yeah. God's word is true. Yeah. If we let it be true to us. Mm. It's not nice sometimes, but it will lead us to a place of, that was the garment taking off mm. moment for me. Mm. You know, we've come yeah. to be unclothed. Yeah. Sorry, I'm leaning back. I shouldn't always lean back when I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> but you get you get into it and you know I'm expressive. Yeah. But it was for me, we've talked about identity, we talked about then mm -hmm. in the weekend we started talking about unclothing mm -hmm. mm. and putting on that garment. And for me, I felt at that moment God was saying to me, clearly, mm. there are some self consciousness okay. you have to put off. Yeah. On yeah. this journey we are going, yeah. you need to lose Obi more. Mm. You are losing it. You think you are, mm -hmm. but you need to lose Obi probably. Mm. Um, it was a defining moment. Wow. So, so it yeah. wasn't. I didn't. I didn't come with any expectation. Mm -hmm. I yeah. didn't have anything. Any moments I was lying on the floor and God spoke, mm -hmm. and it was through a simple narrative. Helen didn't speak for long. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, mm -hmm. I felt the Holy Spirit said to me, I am convicting you. Mm -hmm. I think you, you need to lose much more. Mm -hmm. When you carry my word, when you go on the journey, yeah. think less of Obi. Mm -hmm. yeah. Think less of personal ambition. Mm -hmm. Think less of who you are. Think even less of the gift you think I've given you. Mm -hmm. Come and be mm -hmm. naked properly. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I've not walked through what unpacking that means for me, but I knew in that moment that there were things about how I see myself um, that on this journey I am with God that I need to lose mm -hmm. completely. Mm. Wow. Um, and, and so it was interesting that you came with the even same. slightly different angle, mm -hmm. but on that same point, mm -hmm. and, and it was powerful, so powerful. Mm -hmm. I've never felt convicted and clearly... Um, had a word clearly mm. that way. I always find it interesting when we go into a place and God calls us to go into the deep, that these are the kind of the things that mm. he says. You want to come into the deep, then let's deal with, mm. let's deal with some stuff so you can really come in the deep with me. And it's that place of going, taking you to a deeper place of trust, a deeper place of ending of yourself mm -hmm. <laughs> so that you get to go to those places with him to see the fullness yeah. uh, and when I say that I say that very lightly because I don't think we're ever going to see the fullness no. until we're in no. heaven yeah. no. but there's a fullness that we can see and mm. there's a fullness that he invites us in to see mm. but sometimes that is of stripping mm. of ourselves mm. so I know that you've been in this year take me deeper I've yeah. been going into yeah. this year yeah. take me deeper <laughs> it's been the call of this yeah. year and how when we ask that, he knows the heart that we say it in, in that mm. moment. And he mm. honors that heart. Yeah. And then yeah. that's when these challenges come. And then when those things are, because yeah. he's saying, I know you want to go deep with me. So mm. then let's deal with these deeper stuff. And you're like, yeah. oh, okay. It comes and it can sting, but you want to go, okay, I trust you. Come and come and do whatever it is you've got to do. Yeah. Mm. That's thank you for sharing that, Obi. No, as well, that's, that's really awesome. deep. And, mm. uh, 
to have that kind of personal revelation is is really challenging and yet it is. and yet it's precious at the same time because mm. you know God's put his finger on mm. something yeah. and you don't want to lose that do you no. um, yeah and you know it is true yeah when he says it to you when yeah. you examine your heart you do know yeah mm -hmm. as black and white as night and day that it is the truth mm. Mm. Um, yeah and it's something we are working through with God but it did is did you the truth. feel mm. when it came did you feel a weight of that or did it come with a grace on it because sometimes we can misinterpret yeah. and that doesn't always come with guilt and doesn't always no. need to come with heaviness so yeah. did you feel heaviness of that that stuff from God or did no, you feel I felt I felt the truth okay. mm. of it yeah. so I felt the conviction of it is not something someone says to me and says believe I felt the conviction of it. I felt mm. the truth of it. I, I, in that moment, I prayed mm -hmm. an honest prayer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I said, you know, God lead me. Mm. All I can do is bring myself on this journey. Yeah. Would you show me? Um, I know, I will still fail. <laughs> you know, so there's mm. no pressure. Yeah. In living up to something, I don't mm. even know what it looks like. That's great. But there is something you want to deal with here. That's mm. clear. And I just say, God, as I'm trusting you, please help me to reflect mm. in ways that I honor you more, in ways that I reduce more mm. Um, mm. to your glory. Mm. Yeah. Um, and, and that was it. So I, I came out feeling relieved. I came out knowing that I had met God in a different way. Mm -hmm. And he has revealed something of the journey. And and the one he loves, he chastens. Mm -hmm. The one mm -hmm. he loves, he corrects. Yeah. Um, so it's not something you walk away feeling beaten up or it's not something, it's something you walk away feeling, feeling more of God's love, more of his calling, more clarity about his calling in your life. Less of, for me, is actually the opposite. For me, it's less pressure. <laughs> okay. Um, because I tend to put pressure on myself. Um, yeah. We were having a little conversation before this, and you tend to assume and run mm -hmm. and walk, mm -hmm. and your first instinct is to be self-reliant. You've done this for mm -hmm. so many years. Probably will continue. But you come away feeling less pressured. I told you um, my little boy was not feeling so mm -hmm. well, and, and this week as I was praying for him, um, I prayed on Tuesday last week, um, then he had to go into hospital. Then I prayed on Wednesday over him. And as I was praying, the second prayer on Wednesday, I felt that word come mm. to me. It was almost like I was trying to take charge <laughs> and ask God. And I said, God, let your will be done. Yeah. Mm. And stopped asking. Because that was another challenge to that us. That was wasn't another it? About challenge. About not telling God what exactly. we can't tell God what to do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It was <laughs> so at that point, I didn't know if I was going to have procedure or whatever. But yeah. yeah. And I just said, it's your will. Yeah. And in a way, for me, it's not a pressure. Mm -hmm. It's something that God is convicting. It's, something, it's a work. But it's, it brings release. Mm. It, it brings less of expectation on you. Mm. But it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I love that because I think some people can really fear, can walk into a relationship mm. with fear and fearing that God's going to reveal and fearing that God's going to challenge and fearing what he's going to bring up mm. and actually... Mm whenever he has brought challenge and directly mm. called something out of me, it's never come with condemnation. Mm. It's never come with anger and aggression. No. It's always come with a loving gentleness, yes. but with an authority that says, daughter, you got to deal with this. Mm. So come away with me and let's deal with it. Never left on my own. Mm. Never feeling like I've yeah. got to no. like crawl up on hands yeah. and feet <laughs> no. out the pit. No. It's like, I'm going to throw down a rope ladder and you take it one step at a time but you're going to mm. face this and you go okay so yeah i love the fact that it that you speaking that out will mm. encourage other people that don't fear that when god brings a a challenge because he's, mm. he's not this great big guy mm. in the sky with a pointy no. finger and a whip <laughs> mm. he's not like that he no. wants us to walk in freedom with him and deeply with him yeah. because he has a passionate yeah. love and desire for us to be free so i love yeah. that ob mm. thank you Right. Jerry, do you use the word heaviness? Did it feel heavy? Mm. And I, I would say, when I've been in those kind of had those kind of times, I'd say there's a weightiness to it, mm -hmm. but not necessarily heaviness. Mm -hmm. if, if that's if you yep. can mm -hmm. distinguish those two, weightiness meaning a good thing, a sense of awesomeness, um, 
a sense of that presence of God where you know mm. there's an authoritative word yes. being spoken. But heaviness kind of can imply a negativeness yeah. to it as yeah. well. And there's none of that. No. But but there is that moment of awe mm. a way that, oh mm. I'm seen, I'm known. Yeah. In a really powerful way, in a good way. Yeah. Um but a way that ultimately leads you to growth and release. Yeah. Mm -hmm as well yeah. and that's yeah that's a really powerful word you just shared Obi. thank you yeah there's mm -hmm. there's not many i've been to bible college graduations and spoken to enough people who been around enough kind of prophetic meetings there's there's not many times you go to those occasions and people are prophesying obscurity mm -hmm. over those who are graduating or you know, mm -hmm. someone's got a ministry gift and mm -hmm. you say well great god's going to take you where no one's ever going to see you mm -hmm. it's always the opposite isn't yeah. it we're always prophesying promotion and yeah um, prominence <laughs> yeah. and uh, blessing, greatness. And so, so many, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and yet, how do we handle it when God says, "Okay, mm. uh, how will you? How, how about some obscurity? How about mm. nobody knows you? How about mm. nobody ever sees you, and yet they see me?" Mm. And just as you were talking, I was reminded of John the Baptist, where he he says, "I must decrease, that yeah. he must increase." Decrease. And he'd grasped something of that importance of mm. yeah. putting Jesus first and yeah. people genuinely seeing him. And even John the Baptist wobbled a bit later on when he's in prison and yeah. sent sent messengers to go to Jesus to say, oh, is he really Are the one? Are you the one? Is he yeah. really? <laughs> you know, give me some confidence here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in that moment, in that first moment, he was willing to, to be of no renown yeah. that everyone might see Jesus. <laughs> and that was the message that was coming across mm. this that weekend. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Still a challenge, though, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is. But a good one. Yeah. It's a big challenge. And it's only when he puts his finger on it in a certain area or that a certain attitude or a certain yeah. thing mm. that you're like, oh, <laughs> man, okay. <laughs> I've got to go there with yeah. you. Because <laughs> I don't think we, I don't think any of us intentionally do this mm. stuff. No. But we've got a loving father that says, hey, I want to take you somewhere. Mm. Yeah. We need to deal with this before we go to that place. Mm. And uh, he's trustworthy because when he calls it out, it is it is worth trusting him to go yeah. there with because he only does it for our good. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes. And pointing to him. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, that's what he's all about. So and, and that was one of the lovely things about this weekend we're talking about where looking across the room you could see pockets of people praying yeah. and, and mm. responding to God in a very gentle way, generally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the one we had before four years ago was uh, wow I mean that would come off a, a back of a really challenging time yeah. and God broke some things in a yeah. very powerful way mm -hmm. this time seemed very gentle yeah. mm -hmm. and yet very deep at the same yeah. time God was at work almost in everything that was yes. happening the meal times yes. the, the conversations, conversations yeah. there was just a sense that, and maybe it was the venue you know, it's a sense that you're in a prayed in venue mm. that people for year after yeah. year after year have sought the Lord there. I'm sure there's a little bit of that there, too. Yeah. Um, but something just about being in God's presence. People had come ready. People had come invested. Yeah. Mm. Um, that probably helped so as well. Right. Um, but no, it was, yeah, it was a rich time. It was. Everyone. I think what I really loved as well is that there was the opportunity to pray for one another. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes people can so easily want it to be mm -hmm. from up front. Mm. They think they haven't got anything. Yeah, and there was none of that really, was no, there? No, there wasn't. There was very little of that. Again, yeah. it was kind of cementing us as a family. Go yeah. and find some people, talk to each other, pray for one another, listen for one another. Yeah. Yeah. And that was really beautiful mm. um, because I think you're right. Everyone was there mm. wanting to be there together. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, to see, I certainly prayed with someone that um, Andy and I'd never prayed mm. with before. Okay. Um, and it was just cementing that thing of going, mm. this, this is what, this yeah. is what it's about. Yes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. This isn't just about Doug, Tim and Helen and, mm. and them coming with yeah. holy hands to pray yeah, over right. us. And, and they weren't saying that at all, which is what I love about mm. them. Um, but to give, to say to everybody else, go pray. Mm. Yeah. Pray, have some mm -hmm. time, pray for these people. It was beautiful, mm. really beautiful. And um, that's what we should be doing. Yeah. Mm. 
And then reality hit Monday morning. Yeah. <laughs> I said back to work and... Oh, it hit. All the rest of it. And that felt really weird. Very yeah. to be honest. weird. I don't know how it felt for you guys, but... I uh, missed you all at breakfast. I think that was the thing. <laughs> I get so used yeah. to then seeing everybody for breakfast. Yeah. And like yeah. you say, if it had carried on for a week, you might not have seen such a joy for me. <laughs> I might have you been sitting skip, there. You might skip breakfast. <laughs> do you know what I might have done? I said to Andy, you do it because I'm so done with people. Yeah. Um, but it, well, I was sad Monday yeah. morning. It wasn't quite the same going downstairs, just yeah. seeing the boys for breakfast, my cup of, my cup of coffee, you know, <laughs> yeah. it, seeing who you were going to sit with this time and chatting yeah. to people. It was, yeah, it was quite sad. Yeah, it was sad because I yeah. genuinely <laughs> love being with everybody. Yeah. Really love. We, James, Sharon and myself and Andy have spoken a long time about saying, wouldn't it be wonderful? And we've lured Obi mm. into this conversation <laughs> every now and then. Wouldn't it be amazing to have a place where mm. you all lived yeah. in community? You had your own homes, but you oh, had wow. that kind okay. of area. Mm. You know, it would be beautiful. I'm not moving yet, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he's not in. None of us have got two pennies to rub together, Stuart, so we're not there yet. But we were coming wow. up with the idea of going, yeah. do you know what? That extended yeah. family yeah. of, hey, can you help them with this? Hey, yeah. this is going on. Can you guys come pray? Can, mm. You know, yeah. just that freedom mm -hmm. to mm. have that. Um, laughing together, enjoying life together. Yeah. It is. I mean, one of we had another group from some other church come. Mm. And one of them said, so where are you guys from? Mm -hmm. And they were predominantly black mm -hmm. people, so maybe that gave the lady the courage to approach me and say, so where are you guys from? Okay. I said, oh, we're a church in Tunbridge Wells. We're yeah. Tunbridge Wells Christian Fellowship. So said, yeah, I noticed you guys are so different, but you're so close. Okay. That was the word. Okay. Yeah. And right. I don't think any of us was making any effort to show off closeness yeah. Or, yeah. or anything. And there was just something about the church family. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you were not there, hopefully next time you'll be there. But Not hopefully, come. <laughs> come. <laughs> come, come, come. You have to do whatever you can. Yeah, yeah. I be mean, there. Everyone that knows Obi knows I love chatting and I love uh -huh. talking to people. But you know, after supervising Ezra and Dumebi and Chimdi over a game of football for two hours, I couldn't even. I wanted to have a line yeah. Um, yeah. before the evening session, but I couldn't even get to the room. Okay. You know, I met someone from church. Uh -huh. We had a chat. They told me about what they're planning, what they're doing. Okay. We had a little prayer because you always end up, oh, yeah. you want me to pray for you? We pray. And then I was escaping. And then someone <laughs> said, oh, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> and at some point I was like, oh, why is this church so loving? I need to go and sleep. <laughs> and then come back for the evening. But, you know, it just shows the heart people have. Yeah. When we create that environment and we mm. make that space for us to be one family, it just shows. Uh, and, the, and I don't know if it's Stewart and the culture here, that Stewart Promos or mm -hmm. it's not Stewart or whatever is happening here. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but a lot of us have a culture of submitting to one another mm -hmm. and, and being a little bit open. I hope, I pray it grows. Yeah. But being that close family where you share stuff. I can meet someone, they can tell me about their plan, their ministry plan or work or a challenge going on in work. It just goes all the way. Yeah. You know, I met someone we're talking about ministry plans and stuff and then turn around to the next conversation it's about a challenge they had before coming to Ashburnham and down in tears and we're holding hands and praying mm -hmm. and it's just a semblance and for someone that we don't need the world's validation or anything like that mm -hmm. but for someone sitting across the room seeing us as a church family for the first time mm. and seeing the dynamics, we're a very diverse church, mm -hmm. you know, ethnically, racially. Yeah. But for someone sitting across the room to read that closeness, yeah. I think it's a thing to just give God glory. Amen. And, I, think, and it's, I think it's been something you know, that's been in the church for a long time. time. Um, though it has to be reinvented in mm. different generations. I remember yeah. Doreen telling me that one of Colin's, um, Colin was a pastor here for, 38 years yeah. um, so a very long time and God had told him to make the church a family oh, early wow. on so that was part of his kind of um, calling from the Lord yeah. and, and saw that in, in that generation and then you have to reinvent that again because yeah. it looks different and it looks yeah. different you've touched on the kind of um, international flavor um, intercultural yeah. dynamic mm -hmm. that the church now has and, and that adds such a richness yeah um, and that's such a blessing to yeah. us yeah that, that there's that increasing diversity yeah. where we learn yeah. from each other, love one another, and, and it's a picture of God's kingdom. It is. And um, mm. we're having to learn how to be family together, yeah. aren't we? And, and I, I, I'm pleased to hear that. I love hearing yeah. that lady's reflection that there seems to be a genuine closeness mm. that's there amongst people. That's, I felt that's blessed. Good to yeah. hear that. I felt blessed to hear that. Yeah. 
And it's true, I think. There is, and we, we've we still got a long way to go. Yeah, yeah. As always, we're, we're exploring yeah. what does it look like. Yeah. And we're at different stages in our relationships of trusting one another, of yeah. being open together. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a lot more we can do yeah. in that space. But hopefully the weekend that we've just had, as well as other times where we get the chance to relax and be together, mm. yeah. our life groups, again, a little bit help with that. Um, the more we can do to be in each other's company yeah. and work through difficult times together, yeah. the stronger those bonds get. Absolutely. The more we're willing to be vulnerable, yeah. the deeper the relationship goes. Your relationship yeah. can't go deep without yeah. vulnerability yeah. and honesty. Yeah. And mm. that is costly for some that have been maybe at previous churches that have been really hurt and let down. Yeah. Mm. Um, whether that's family that they've yeah. just been brought up that you just don't talk about your stuff. Mm. Having to learn to do something different mm. to get deeper relationships. It doesn't come by just general chit chat. No. Yeah. It comes when you let somebody in. Yeah. And once you've let them in, um, something shifts and changes. Yeah. And, and I think that is... I think there's been pockets of people that have been doing that with one another. Yeah. Mm. And that's what then creates mm -hmm. that environment yeah, like fair. at Ashburnham Place that creates that authentic, yeah. you guys really love to be together. Yeah. And you want to go, yeah, yeah, because there's pockets here where people have done real life. Yeah. Yeah. They know the ins and outs yeah. and they go, we still love you. We've still yeah. got you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that, that's yeah. what church life and family life needs to be like. And, and what I think always looking for the best as well yes. in people. Yeah. Yes. So, it, you know, it's easy. It would be really easy to fall out and it'd be really easy to moan and gossip. Yes. But we don't want any of that. No. There's no need for that. There, no. There's plenty of that outside the walls. Absolutely. Yeah. So look for the best and celebrate what God's doing in yeah. someone's life. And if I think if we can keep looking for the the, the bit where Tiny. God's at work. Yeah. You know, the, that, that thing you can fan into flame, you can encourage, mm -hmm. you can bless. Um, then we'll continue seeing God doing good things. Yeah. Yeah. There's no need to pull each other down. No. There's enough of that, isn't there? And so. do you know what? That starts with us. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Because it's the renewing of your own mind about yeah, how you feel yeah. yourself. We yeah. seem to judge everybody else mm -hmm. how we judge ourselves. Mm -hmm. So there's got to be that inner working with us individually mm. so mm. that then we see other people as graciously as we'd feel for ourselves. Yeah. And that is a is a lifelong journey mm. that we've all got beyond. But yeah. do you know what, Stuart? You were so right. We get a lot of that in the world. Yeah, we do. When church doesn't look any different to what you get in your workplace, yeah. we've got something wrong. Yeah, mm. We're doing it wrong. Because actually we should be in a place where people want to come and belong. Yeah, And that means we've got to really go there. Mm. How? What are we thinking? How are we being with each other? How mm. are we being towards ourselves? Because mm -hmm. how I'm going to be towards myself and feel about myself is how mm. I'm going to project onto other people. Um, and how am I letting people in mm. and choosing to do it differently mm. and and I really hope that the more the more at TWCF we do life together the deeper we become yeah. family that shines Jesus mm. and mm. people want to belong and want to be because they feel loved and accepted regardless mm. um, challenged because we've all got to challenge each yeah, other yeah, sure. we've got to relationship comes when you've got to call out somebody sometimes but it's with love and grace yeah. and from a trusting place yes. that says hey I love you and you know yeah. I love you but hey let's call this out yeah. um, and those things are going to take some time mm. and we're seeing them yeah I just picking up on a couple of the points you've both made, um, you've talked about the, this theoretical idea of, of building community together, mm. of, you know, how, <laughs> buying houses and <laughs> living alongside each other. And Joey, you talked earlier about kids growing up together to become young adults, uh, maintain those relationships. That takes a long time. It, it does. does. This is not a quick fix. No. We're not talking about um, providing kind of state-of-the-art hmm. latest entertainment yeah. um, for, for a short period of time this is relationships where yeah. people belong together connect together for as long as god calls them to be in the same place yeah. but yeah. but do, doing that with a deep commitment mm -hmm. um that's that's going to take effort it's going to take yeah. time yeah. it's going to take oh, i think eugene peterson calls discipleship a long journey in the same direction there's mm -hmm. this sense of just yeah plodding along at times yeah um you, you, you talked before about doing life together. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a lot of this yeah. just being in the same space and yeah. seeing what God does mm -hmm. yeah. and um, enjoying that process too along the way. And being intentional. Yeah. yeah. I think we were called to this church because of Ezra. 
Okay. We were unsettled in our mm. previous church. We weren't happy. Um, we weren't sure what to do. And we were calling on the Lord to say where, because they mm. didn't have children's work there. And we'd got Ezra. And we were like, where? And we knew that God had called okay. us. Uh, my so grand- God had our prayers. My okay. grandma was here. <laughs> <laughs> my grandma was here. She had no idea. She came to my parents' house yeah. that Sunday and said, oh, I got a real sense that Ezra should have been at church this oh, morning. Oh, bless her. And she had no idea. Okay. Okay. That I, we both had been I praying, love your Lord, grandma. where do you, I know. Um, you know, she had no idea we were going, yeah. Lord, where do you want to plant Ezra? Yeah. So for us, it's that longevity of going, God, you know, we mm-hmm. know you've called mm-hmm. us to plant mm-hmm. Ezra here. We've gone on to then have Otto, mm-hmm. and it's that place of going, Lord, mm. this is intentional. Mm-hmm. We want this to be an intentional place that becomes family, not just for Andy and I, although we're being blessed with the relationships God has bringing into our lives but for our children too yeah. so yeah don't you go anywhere mister <laughs> you over there with you and your lovely family and there's some other gorgeous families that are in this place that our boys are richly yeah, like, blessed like, like Stuart said I think he's also sticking it out through the good times yeah. and the patch yeah. I've not been in TWCF that long only eight years now coming up to eight years and I've had even in that eight years I've seen us change mm quite dramatically yeah, i've seen hugely. i've seen times of huge growth i've seen times obviously mm-hmm. not all by covid where we've shrunk mm-hmm. and i've seen and, and i think i've seen challenges as mm-hmm. we are all human beings mm-hmm. we are yeah. doing life and we won't always get it right mm-hmm. we won't yeah. always make the best decisions but i think part of that unclothing for me apart from the powerful connection i had is also removing as much as we can daily by seeking god i don't, I don't think it's something we can do on our own Mm -hmm. i think it's something we do by keep looking unto god yeah every day keep seeking his word and then him using the light of his word to Mm. take bits he doesn't want to then say hey son come today you don't have that jumper this Mm. is what i want you to go on and then going forward and sticking it staying like Stuart said the discipleship Mm. stay in the course Mm. of the journey through the thick and the thin with each other and just trusting god yeah i think Amen. Well, we hope that if you aren't in a church, that you would get yourselves into a church and get yourself plugged in. Get yourself and be really bold and brave and courageous at wanting to get to know people. And do you know what? Those of you that are at our church at TWCF, if you are on the fringe and you want to get to know some people, be brave. Yeah. Be brave because all of us here that are sitting here have had moments where we've had to be brave. Yeah. We've had to swallow every bit of anxious nervousness to yeah. go and put mm. ourselves out there to mm. say hello to someone yeah. or to sign up to something. Yeah. You know, it does take that step. And the worst thing you can do is sit on the fringe going, I'm lonely, I'm lonely, yeah. I'm lonely. You know what? Take that step and uh, and keep taking those steps mm. to put yourself in a position to get to know people because when you do you are going to find some people yeah. that want to share life with you and take a lonely step with you yeah. into becoming community yes. so please be encouraged tonight we are sitting here we've done eight years of doing a bit of life together the three of us here and james when he's with us um and we're still growing yeah. we're yeah. still learning some yep. of this stuff yep. and we're eight years in at the same church yeah. Um, so be encouraged tonight um, yeah and if you are at a church and it's got a church weekend going sign yourself up <laughs> do not miss it yeah. because we have been richly blessed yeah. and um, yeah and when we do our next one please family come and join us sign up and um, yeah you won't miss out you, you, you mm. won't, you're going to miss out not being there yeah. you're not going to miss out by coming and being with us and, and being with family um, so Stuart I want to thank you and the church yeah. leadership for organising that for us and yes, that please. precious thank time you. because yeah. it was yeah thank it was you. a gift and let's do it again and as um, many times as we can huge thanks to Helen uh, behind the scenes yeah. she was putting in so much work with the practical arrangements that we needed but yeah, yeah thank you but there was a lot of planning that must have gone yeah, into that yeah. Yeah. Thank you. took thank a lot you. of time yeah it was worth Great. it yeah it absolutely was um thank you gentlemen thank, thank you thank very you. much for a nice evening and um i look forward to chatting i don't know what we're going to talk about in the next two <laughs> well, weeks we shall see. no so, idea <laughs> god, god knows <laughs> he god does knows. he does give us some ideas lord what's what's yes. next on the table <laughs> well thank you so much for listening have a wonderful couple of weeks and um we will be back in your ears in two weeks time good night gents
Good, Good night. night. Good, Good night. God bless. God bless you.